Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the second and final part in my short series on building an umbrella rig. Now, at the end of our first tutorial, we'd got things to this stage. So we built the actual framework for our umbrella. In this second part, we're going to be focused on creating the canopy. And we're going to be achieving this using the wonderful particle based cloth. And as you can see, it really does work beautifully. Fantastic. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The temptation here, I think, would be to open the umbrella fully. In fact, probably to even switch off the espresso and the pose morph tags and get the frame flat. Don't even bother going there. It's not the way to do it, because obviously if you did that, the temptation then would be to bring in, say, a disc, give it eight rotation segments so that it lines up, adjust its outer radius until you get it to the correct size, and then start working with that. Don't even go there. It's not the way to do it. I tried that and it just doesn't work. It doesn't give you the result that you're looking for. No, the way to go about doing this is to bring in a cone. I'll just select my controller and bring this back to, well, I'm going to set this to three because I know that's where it needs to be. If we switch to our right hand view, so F3, we can start working with this cone. The bottom radius is what we need to work with first, but we also need to get this cone to somewhere around the middle. We can do a little bit of playing around to get this absolutely right, but we can work with our, actually our height is probably where we want to go first. So let's work with that. If we bring that down. Now I can see that that's not quite right because I want this to be above there. So if I bring that just up a little bit higher to start working with this and just bring my height up a little bit higher. I think about 58, possibly even a little bit higher, but we'll go 58 at the moment. I think it probably needs to be 60 actually. Let's go 60. Let me just bring that until it's around level with these here. Just drop down a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. And then in the bottom radius here, we just bring that in and I think that needs to be about 24. So keep it going until it's yeah, 24 is good for that, but we can still see that this needs to be a little higher. So 60 wants to be about 62, 63, I think is about right. That looks good for my money because it's just about matching up with this and we've got a little bit of extra height here. That's fine. So 24, 63 is good for the bottom radius and the height. The height segments, the next thing we need to worry about, and that needs to be 12. And our rotation segments need to be 40. And if we just go back into our 3D view, we can see our ribs here. And we can see that we've got five rotation segments here. That's good because it doesn't give us a cut through the center of here. And I found that this works better. If you end up with a center cut, you won't get as pleasing a result. So for me, this is the definitive setup for the cone. 24 or 24 bottom radius, height 63, height segments 12 and rotation segments 40. That's where it needs to be. OK. So that's the first part of our setup ready to go. The next step for us is to come into our caps tab and check this off because we obviously don't want any cap on the bottom there. We want it completely open. Moving on from here, we can hit F3 to go into our right hand view. And we can see a rib here and that rib is in rib one. It's rib, it's rib one. We've, we want to actually check off or switch off our subdivision surface. And then what we can see here, we can see that this bottom edge is just about lining up correctly. If we just go into this uh, 
Rubicon cube here and switch on points. We can see that our point here is just about aligning perfectly with this bottom edge. So we don't need to do any work with that particular edge. But if we look at our next one, we can see that it's just above the point. So we need to start working there. So let's switch to edge mode, switch back to our cone and we can make it editable. Let's just hit C to make it editable. And now we can see this edge. So UL to select this particular edge loop and then we can move it. So we can just bring this down until it just about aligns with that outer point there and then switch to our scale tool and Y is checked off. If yours isn't, then make sure that it is and then we can just draw that out until it lines up. And it's only a fraction on this particular occasion, but we can see that our edge above it here, our loop, if we just go to UL and loop select that, we can see that this is quite a bit above there. Now, if we just move it down to somewhere around there, and then we can switch to our scale tool and scale out until it just about matches up. And that's what we've got to do with all of these loop or edge loops here. OK, it's just a rinse and repeat. So I'll do the next one. Move that down. Scale tool. Move it out. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. As long as it's near enough, that's good enough. OK, so as I said, it's just a rinse and repeat with all of these. So I hit the space bar, loop select, space bar. Well, I can do the scale first, but it's better to do the move. So I'll just do the move, drop this down, hit this and then place that there. I'll continue doing it and by the power of editing, I'll come back to you. Just scale this one out. And then this top one here, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with that. So if we just loop, select that one and just zoom in. Move this down now. It wants to go level with the top. Ignore this. So we're going to miss out this here. It doesn't matter because it's not essential. So we'll just drop this down until it comes down level with that. And then scale that one in. And then we can worry about this top. Now with the top, we just got a point. But if we select the point and we move we find that we only move one point because we've actually got a collection of points here. So what we need to do is select all points, hold down our control key and select optimize. And now we can move it and we're moving all points. So if we just select our top one again, we can just drop this down until it's just about somewhere here. That will be OK. It will sort itself out. And now I missed a row. If we go down a little bit further. I did miss this row. So if we switch back to our loop tool. Or, or our edge tool, I beg your pardon, our edge mode and select this loop. We can sort that one out. So let's just select our axis tool, bring this one down scale tool and bring it out to there and that's fine we've now got everything well and truly set up and we're ready for the next step we'll hit f1 to return to our 3d view and we can switch off our cone for now because we need to work with our ribs what we need to do is switch off the subdivision surfaces for all of the cubes that make up our ribs so we'll do that so we'll get rid of that one We'll get rid of that one. We've already switched this one off. We'll switch this one off, this one off, 
this one off this one off and this one off so now our ribs are just purely cubes with no subdivision surfaces on them the next thing we need to do is work with them individually because what we've got to actually make happen is that we need to be in points mode for a start and we need to think about making some selections which we will use to belt our cloth onto so we'll switch or well, we'll select this bottom point in the center of our rib here and then come up to the top of it and this is again it's another fiddly job but it's a job that we've got to do and we'll select this top point we just shift select that top point okay so we've got that then we can hit ul for loop selection and we can say stop at selections because we only want the top and now we should find if we hit o for object that we've selected all of our top points okay so we've got that done now if we zoom in a little bit here we don't actually need this point selected but for now I'm gonna rinse and repeat do all of the others and we we can then take these points out in one hit so we'll we'll do that afterwards okay so I'll select my next cube select the top point so with my brush selection just select the top point just want to make sure in my options that I've got visible only checked I have come down to the bottom of it select with the shift key this point space bar or rather I was gonna to have to select UL actually UL selected and then click on there and now we've got that sorted out so I'll continue doing them and by the power of editing I'll come back to you when I've done them and that should just about complete our selections I think I think I'm there okay yeah that looks fine just make sure we're back up the top make sure where we are yeah everything looks good I like to double check my selections because it's better safe than sorry now these points that we don't need we also don't need these points here but the thing is interestingly enough I think to be perfectly honest it will belt to the closest point anyway so you may not need to switch them off but as I say better safe than sorry and I tend to like my selections to be absolutely correct so I'm going to select all of my cubes And that's all of them and I can see all of my selections and that's all looking good let's go back to our right hand view and zoom in so we know that we don't want any of these so I'm going to hold down my command key and select now let's have a look and see where I am in my tool here I don't want visible only I'll check that off so I can get rid of all of these points right okay if I switch to my front view just zoom in a little bit just make sure I've got rid of all those points yeah they've all gone so now let's have a look down here I want to get rid of these as well so let's just command click to get rid of these and these over here and that should I think be everything if we no don't want you if we switch back to our right hand view we should find that everything is gone and it looks to me as if it is okay fantastic right so they are our selections ready for our belts for our cloth fantastic so we've got it that far the next thing to do is make similar uh, uh, selections not suggestions selections on our cone okay so that's our next step right let's get our cone back into the scene okay so let's select our first cube and that's over there so we're going to belt to that first cube now 
and let's see where we are. So with our cone selected, we need to, yeah, we need to select this row. So UL, and we can select this row. The, what we don't want is the top point. We do not want to belt the top point. So every time I do a selection, I'm going to have to take away that top point. It's just one of those things I've got to do. So we'll just command select that one. Fantastic. So that's our first selection. Now we need to set this up. If we come into our tags and we give this a cloth tag for a start, let's see where we are. So in the surface tab here, the stretchiness, I'm just going to give one and I'm going to leave this, the actual bendiness at 10 for now. And that's the only change I'm going to make in there. Moving on from here, let's select our first cloth belt. So we'll grab a hold of one of those. Now you must put this after the cloth tag. Don't put the belts before it. Always put them after. OK, so that's our first one of those. And now we need to belt this on to a cube. Now, which cube was it? It was this one, was it? Or was it one of the others? Let's have a look. Which cube are we going to belt onto? Right, we're belting onto this one. So we, we selected our cone. Yep, yeah, and we're belting onto this first cube. So rib. So let's just bring that cube into here and hit set. And we've got our first selection done, that we've got our first belt sorted out. We can see that that's fine. So the next thing to do then is just create another belt tag and I'll command drag to create this one. We can clear this if we wish. And then we'll make another selection on our cone, which is going to be here. And then we need to belt this onto the cube from rib naught. So let's select that and draw that into there and hit selection. The only thing I've done there, I shouldn't have selected the Let's have a look, see where we are to make sure. Yeah, I've got a selection round there. I don't want that. So let me see where I am. I want a loop selection. Definitely UL. I do want a, a loop selection, but I do not want. Let's just take that away for a second. I do not want all of the things to be selected. Let's see where we are. What I need to do. Yeah, I think what I actually need to do is just have a check, see where we are around the side. I've got another selection down there, which I don't want. Yeah, OK, let me just work this out. So I'll UL and command select if it will let me. I don't won't actually let me. It's because I've got stop selection and that's it. Let's just take that off. If I just command select that, that's taken that away. And that's that's got me back to where I need to be. Let's just have a look, see what I've got here. So let's have a look. Stop at poles. I wonder if that'll help. Yeah, stop at poles, I think, does help, doesn't it? Yeah, that does. That's fine. So stop at poles needs to be checked. OK, so make sure you, you've got stop at poles checked when you do this because you don't want it to go all the way around. So we've got that done. And then once again, I can take out that centre point. So let's just command select that to get rid of it. And then we can think about doing another cloth belt. So let's just command drag to copy that one. We can clear it or we can just simply drag in rib noughts cube and hit set. And now we've got our second selection. So you can see how this is working. It's just going to be a case of once again, rinse and repeat, and then we'll get everything set up. So by the power of editing, I'll get this done and then I'll come back to you. Let's get rid of that top point once again. Another belt tag. And finally, we can just drag in the cube from cube six or from rib six, I beg your pardon, and set that. And now we've got all of our selections done. So everything is ready. That's looking very nice. And now we can think about what we're going to do next. Well, basically, we can see whether or not we can actually make this behave like cloth. So if we come into our cloth tag here, we've got the dresser tab here and we'll select that. And we've got dressomatic. If we hit that straight away, we actually get seams put through here and that's fine. So we, we know that that's going to work, but it hasn't moved because everything is just set where it is. What we need to do is get a, get a hold of our controller and bring this back to zero. And if we look underneath, we can see that where our cloth belts are, they're bringing this back in here.
Now, one thing I will do is select all of my cloth belts. And with this hover here, I'm just going to set this to zero. And then what we can do is just go back into our cloth tag here and hit the dress matic button again. And straight away we go back to the center and we can just relax as well, just to make it a little different. And we can see at the top, everything is okay. It's all nice and tidy. So that's all good. It's all working as we want it to. The next thing I'm going to do is select my cone and drop it into a cloth surface. So I'm just going to click on this, so option click, or rather should have been command click, I think. Let's just undo that command click to drop that into there. No, not command click. Maybe it's a shift click. Let's see what happens there. No, it's not. It's probably going to be a shift command or something like that. I can't remember which it is. But anyway, we'll just drop that in there and that will do the job for us. OK, so we've got our cloth surface ready to go. We can give it three subdivisions, I think, just to make it nice and smooth. And we'll give it 0.2 thickness just to add another dimension to it. And that's looking really quite nice. Now, looking good. So let's see what happens when we actually work with our controller. So we'll select the controller and we'll record its start position at zero, at frame, at frame zero. And then we'll move through to 30 frames open it out fully and we'll record there and let's just see what happens now right first thing we need to do is set this up properly dress matic again relax let's just relax that and then we'll set this as our initial state and it won't be our ultimate initial state but we'll it'll do for now so we're ready and let's just see what happens and straight away we can see that it opens and it looks absolutely beautiful it really does. It's got that lovely curve through each of these panels, exactly what you'd see with a real umbrella. Really, really beautiful. And if we just zoom in, see what's going on at the center of the thing, we can see our cloth is all beautifully done here. It's got it's it's really nice. I mean, we've got to finish it off. We've got to put um, another little piece on the top, which umbrellas usually have like the pointy piece. I think it's called a, a ferrule or a fennel. I'm not absolutely sure. It's one of the two but uh, we'll build one of those and just finish it off. But anyway, that's all looking really beautiful. So if we move on from here, let's just move to 60 frames. We'll select our controller and we'll record that there so that it pauses. Move to 90 frames. Okay, we've done that at 50 frames. I can move that, just grab that and move it to 60. Move it to 90 frames. And, and then with the controller again, we can bring this back to zero. And we'll record there and what I'll do with my animation mode uh, where are we play mode I'm gonna make this simple so that we only go to 90 frames and you'll see why in a moment so let's just go back to the beginning and play through so open close now this is what we want for our initial state so if we select our cloth once again dresser mode we can just say set initial state and then when we go back to zero, we're there. Now let's just run this and see what happens. Beautiful. Let's loop it. So playback mode, we'll just go cycle and let's see what happens. Open, close, and it's fine. We get a perfect cycle or a perfect loop, I suppose I should say, because of the way we've set it up. But look at that, isn't that beautiful? Just fantastic. Now, there are a couple of other things that we could do. It's actually quite good. I mean, it's not colliding with the any of the parts. Now, what we could do, and I'm not, I don't think I'm going to worry too much about that on this occasion. I did do it in my original model, but what I did, I looked at the various parts and I thought, well, the handle could have a collider tag on it. Um, so, you know, if you wish to do this, you can. If you just wish to put a simulation uh, collider tag on any of the parts of the umbrella that you don't want it to go through, such as the handle or the slide piece, just put the colliders on them. Um, you know, if you wish to do that, you can, but it doesn't look as if I really need them on this occasion. I mean, I'm not seeing it going through anything and I don't think you would, to be quite honest with you. But anyway, it's all working exactly as it should. And it really does look beautiful. I mean, this new cloth is superb, this particle based cloth. It doesn't go through itself. You know, I've tried to do an umbrella in the past using the old cloth and I just couldn't get it to work because it always went through itself no matter what I tried to do. But this, it's absolutely stunning. 
Okay, so the only other thing we need to really do is build this feral or fennel. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's a feral. I'll have to look it up. I'll, I'll put it in uh, a caption so that you know what it's actually called. <laughs> but anyway, let's have a go at doing this. So we're going to our right hand view, bring this down and look at where we are on this top. Now, what can we build this from? Might be an idea to bring in a sphere make it something like 10 millimeters or 10 centimeters in the radius let's have a look see where it is it's far too big or is it it's a little bit too big let's make it five in the radius so that's probably better I think let's just bring that down because I don't want all of the, the actual sphere. You, know, you can even go smaller than that. Let's make it two. Let's bring it up. Yeah, that's closing in on it, isn't it? It's getting close to where it needs to be. Probably make it one. Because I want the sort of top bit of it. That's the bit of it that I really want. Something like that much of it. So let's make it editable. Hit C. And we can select the bits of it that we don't want which are going to be these just delete those and then that piece is the piece that we want so let's just go back into our model mode and bring this down here place it somewhere there and then we can just manipulate things by uh, just playing around with the points and, and, and edges and stuff and polygons if we need to let's just select this middle point just bring this up here somewhere it already looks pretty much what we need it to be I think it's just probably bring some of these up as well just to yeah give it that sort of shape something like that and then you know these could just drop into here somewhere and we need if we need to adjust we can adjust but that's the basic shape of it and if we want to we can just drop that into a subdivision surface by holding down the option key. That's very, very interesting. I mean, to get something into a cloth service, you actually have to hold down the command and option keys to put that code into a cloth service. I've just played around in the edit and found that that's what you have to do. But you can just simply hold option to do a subdivision service or any of the others. That's really odd. But anyway, there you go. It's just one of those weird things. But let's see what we're getting now. Let's just see how this looks. It might need to be a little bit bigger, but um, let's just run the sequence so that we get it to there let's just go back to our view here yeah I mean it just it perhaps just needs to be a little bigger doesn't it so that it covers this up here it just needs to cover it completely but it looks good I mean it's it's looking as if it's working quite well let's just make that slightly bigger take it out just that little bit further and drop it down yeah I mean that it's it's looking nice I mean I think you know, you can play around with this again to your heart's content, but I think that actually looks quite nice. Let's just go into isopalms here and well, perhaps just go into garage shading for a second. Yeah, I mean, it's, it does. It looks it looks quite nice. It just finishes the umbrella off and I think that will work quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, that's going to work. That's OK. I think that's fine. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's up to you whether you choose to build that. But I just thought I would just to finish the thing off. It just it just puts that finishing touch on it. But um, but yeah, that's basically all of that. Now, the only other thing we can do thinking about it is just close the ribs up and close up this null here and close up the top. OK, what we can do is place everything that we've got here, including the cloth. So just bring that down to here if we place all of these into a null so option G to group we can call this umbrella fabulous and we've got that there and we should now be able to move it anywhere in the scene and it should be fine we, we just need the fennel or feral <laughs> let's just drop that into the umbrella as well so that we've got everything in one place okay it's just and now we can move everything and that's fine and we should be able to play the animation and everything should work and it does fabulous we can move it wherever we like fantastic 
So that's superb. It's all working exactly as I said I wanted it to. And it really looks great. And that just about brings us to the end of this tutorial and indeed the end of this short series. So as always, I really, really hope you've enjoyed doing this and that you've got some useful techniques that you can use in your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings the curtain down on this series. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.